so are you a cruise person chad i'm gonna lighten the mood i, I am not a cruise person <laughs> i doubt i will ever take a cruise again um that bad eh i'm not sure if it was the fact that it was a disney cruise as opposed to any other type of cruise but there was a lot of people on that boat man like i think there's a four thousand person capacity on that boat there was four thousand people on that damn boat wow like it was busy it was <sighs> the pools were always full of kids there was like a hot tub uh, no word of a lie it was the size of a pickup truck for the whole ship and it was like 20 to 30 kids in that fucking thing like there's no space to get away from people they're not even like people but i think that would be uh overwhelming to the senses it's absolutely overwhelming to the senses <laughs> um Add that to the fact that you're always lining up for something. Like you're lining up for dinner, or you're lining up for food, or you're lining up for drinks, or you're lining up for to meet these fucking Disney characters or something like that. Which I don't mind. Like, time with my daughter, great. Get to bond and all that stuff. But there's a lot of lining up, man. A lot of lining up. Um, line up to get off the boat. Line up to get on the boat. Um, line up for the elevators. It's... A lot of lining up. Is that you why you that. had five fingers in your cup? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Th that and it seems to me that everything is an extra on a cruise. Right? Like you want the fancy ice cream. Oh, that's $2 extra. Or you want the. Uh, they charged more for different ice cream. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Really? They, yeah. 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 They had specialty coffees and stuff like that. Those aren't free. They're like seven, eight, ten dollar coffees or whatever. Um, specialty desserts that aren't on the menu or that are on the menu, but they have a dollar sign beside them. All this shit, like it just makes it feel cheap, you know. Like I paid it charged me two hundred dollars more and let me have all this shit. Don't fucking try and piece it out to me whenever I get there. But is that how they're getting people to take that cruise? Because it seems reasonable. And then they're jacking uh, it on the back end. Maybe. I will tell you that because of that, I won't do it again. Like, I'll take an all-inclusive any day. I will sit on a beach and get my free drinks. And not that I drink all that much on vacation. Or go and get food at whatever time I need to and not have to worry about, oh, how much is that? Is that five? And I'm not worried about the price. It's just the fact that it's an extra and maybe I don't have my wallet or something, you know, or my tap card or whatever. So a, a burger would be free, but if you wanted cheese, you paid for the cheese. Yeah, that's a not a step far enough, but like, yeah, you, so a piece of cake is is free. But if you wanted the gourmet chocolate cake, that's eight dollars extra. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that sort of thing. That's did you get any extras? Was there anything you did designated on the cruise was worth the extra? I had a a beer with dinner, a couple nights, and my cup of rye one night. Um, so you wouldn't get you. There's no all no alcohol was included. No alcohol included. But that's I guess that's par for the course for a cruise. You can get like an alcohol package or whatever okay. if you need to, but. Nah. It was an experience, right? Like we did it once and we found out we're not cruise people and we all said next time we'll go sit on a beach. Did you have a balcony? No, we had a porthole. Because I had heard that you want to be lower on the ship because the, the rocking or whatever. And the first time I got on the ship and it started to move, I'm like, oh, fuck me. How am I going to do this for four days? Um, but by the second day, I grew my sea legs and I'm swaying with the ship and then like it's rocking me to sleep and everything. And my wife's still holding onto the table and she's like, Whoa, we're going to throw up. And all these people are wearing that. They, they wear these patches behind their ears or something oh, like yeah. that to make it less seasick or something. I'm like, I don't think those really do anything, but whatever. I don't feel Where like else? if I have to put a patch behind my ear, 
I don't want to be there. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> like, it's. I love being on this boat and lining up for stuff so fucking much. I'm going to wear big patches behind my ear. That yeah. to me doesn't. It seems weird. I guess I don't. Know. It's it. It's unconventional. Like I just as a way to travel. If you want to see a couple spots, sure, take a cruise. But then again, you're not. You're seeing the port, which is probably the ugliest part of any city, right? Normal, and you get off yeah. the boat, yeah. and everybody's trying to sell you shit. But the ports are fucking ugly for the most. I mean, Bahamas, Nassau had like little shops and shit. I mean, they dress it up and stuff. But you're not going from the port to a beautiful beach. You're getting on a, you're getting on a car or something like that. And they're taking you across an hour's drive to get to a, a nice beach, right? So, is that know. what you did when you got there? You went to a beach? No, we when we got to Nassau. We walked around for a bit, then we got back on the boat. We're like, well, we'll spend the day on the boat where there's no lines because everybody's off the boat. Uh, so. That was a good move. Yeah. And then the next day we're at some like private Disney Island or something like that, which was all right. The water was cold in the Caribbean. So. Really? Yeah. I'm spoiled. Like once you hit Costa Rica or Panama, you want to go places that are that warm all the time. Like that's, the water's like bath water. It's always like 35 degrees. It's incredible when you go that far south. I So we we normally just go to all-inclusive resorts. But then last year when we went to Dominican, we stayed in a hotel. And we, we were there with other people that are more accustomed to the local environment there. And so we – and I enjoyed that too. But then this year we went back to the – in November when we went to the all-inclusive. I I have concluded that I just like it there. At the all-inclusive? Yeah, people are always like, you're missing on the local culture. I'm going to be honest, yeah. like, I don't give a fuck about the local culture in Dominican. Yeah, I don't leave the resort. I killed a goat somewhere else. I, I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but, like, I'm just, I'm saying like, everyone's like, you got to get out and see the culture of the, and I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to do anything. Yes. Kind of like the like when we let la- like normally we do some kind of uh excursion, right? If we go to these mm-hmm. all inclusive places. This time when we were in Dominican, we didn't. And when we were leaving, it was minor like the first time we ever didn't do an excursion when we went to an all inclusive resort. So when we were leaving after eight days, because seven nights, eight days. On the on the eighth day or whatever, I was thinking to myself, I feel like I'm getting out. Like I, almost like I'm getting out. It's like I've been in this place for like eight days, and I've become accustomed to the routine of the place and where we're going and what we're doing. And like it just I, but I also thought that I enjoy a good doing nothing. Yeah, unless there's a problem on the beat, then I definitely <laughs> solve it. But, I struggle um, with doing nothing. I'm not a resort person. Uh, but you're not doing nothing. You're. Yeah, I get student. antsy. You, and then you I are gotta get truly out. unwinding. No, like. No. That one or two weeks a year is my time to just unwind, like completely decompress. But what do you do? You just sit all day? Sit, go in the pool, float around. No, nah, I get Have bored. a drink or two. I drink coffee till 10 in the morning. Have some lunch, maybe have a couple beers in the afternoon, have dinner. I want to do something that I can't do at home. So that's why I'm in the pool in January. (laughs) You can't do that at home. No, but like I could just sit down at home and relax. I I don't know. I just, I'm the type of person. Not in your bathing suit. No, it's true. (laughs) People watching. Oh my God. Like this year, we went on a trip. We didn't go on a vacation. We went on a trip. Next year, we're back to vacation. If all goes well, if we have a good season, I mean, we'll go back to taking two trips a year. But hmm. that's what I mean. I'm not sacrificing. I'm building a house and still going on trips and shit like that. What am I? I'm not sacrificing. Sacrificing not going on three trips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but don't make that kind of money. 
I didn't sell my Vimo for eighty million dollars <laughs> or anything. <laughs> You're not injecting your fucking blood of your child. Yeah. But for the record, when I was told about this person, there was no mention of blood injection. That I, was not brought up. When you like, brought him up, I knew exactly who you're talking about. Because of the blood injection. Because of the blood injection. No one told me about the fucking blood injection. Uh, PK, see, I've got a question. You only see the good oh. parts. You, you don't know? see the sacrifice of yeah. your kid's blood. <laughs> you only see the good parts of the story. Mm. <laughs> uh, this what? ties in well. Blood is red. And this past week or last week was Red Balloon Week. Yeah. <laughs> PK, what is what is 99 Red Balloon Week? You've never heard the song by Nina, 99 Red Balloons? I know the song, but what what what's so special about the week? That's the week. It's 99 <laughs> Red Balloon, Loof Balloon Week. I don't, I don't like both when you in refer to it. communist thing. Yeah. No. Why is Red Balloons? Co- well, I just, I felt like, you know, I watch all the other, you know, I watch a lot of what's going on with the big players in the hardscape space. And, uh, you know, none of them have really had a, a musical guest every week. You know, you don't see, you don't see Mulder and fucking almond fucking throwing musical guests out. Jay squared ain't putting Kenny Rogers out every day. He's too busy <laughs> promoting his own fucking till rotator. So I just felt like, you know, we had to give a little breath to, some other artists, you know, we had Cindy Lauper week the week before. We had Kenny Rogers week. This week we have 99 Noof Balloon week. I um, think uh, next week is a diva week for you. What's a good um, diva? Devo? Devo? Do you don't know Devo? No, I don't. Devo. Whip yeah, it? I know Devo. Whip it. Whip it good. I uh, was thinking about doing like one hit wonder. Like a oh, oh, different one. Hit one. Why are you do you do you feel like the constant playing of ninety nine Noof Loof Balloon made you more or less likely to participate in my Instagram channel this week, Mike? <laughs> I didn't hear it ever. I guess my sound was off. I just kept on hearing you referring to the 99 red balloon week as if like everybody knows that this is red 99 red balloon week <laughs> he does know who doesn't know i i thought i was missing out on something but my that everybody to... else knew in the world except me <laughs> it's about nina and uh, 99 red balloons yeah. red roof balloon okay i prefer the german version i'm a truest I uh, I just thought it would be fun to have a, and I'm sure one week I'll forget about this, and then it'll just go the way of all the other shit that I start and never goes anywhere online. But uh, I just felt like, I really felt deeply like we needed to, um, I just needed a musical guest. I I actually, so there's this song, since we're talking about nothing to do with business this week, um, uh, Kenny Rogers came on my um, I listened to a channel on Sirius Radio called Road Trip and it's just a random bunch of fucking songs and uh, Kenny Rogers came on and it was this song called Coward of the County and I don't know if you guys have ever listened to Kenny Rogers Coward of the County uh, but I would invite you to listen to the the lyrics of it it's it's a bit disturbing um it's it focuses on a a a, a coward whose <laughs> girlfriend from is the, from a county a coward well he's the coward because his father wasn't a coward and went to jail so his dad told him you be the coward so you don't go to jail this is the gist of the song but then he gets a girlfriend or a wife i don't know the exact and she gets gang raped at a bar and then he goes and avenges the gang rape and it just seemed like a a really deep topic to be in a Kenny Rogers song. Yeah. And I just I was listening to it and I was like, wow, this song and then it just inspired me to that song inspired me to start Kenny Rogers week. So there's gonna be uh what what's the song called? Coward Coward of the County. 
So there's going to be a counter to the counter of the county week? No, we already did Kenny Rogers. Oh, okay. But then Kenny Rogers <laughs> week was such a huge success. We had Cindy Lauper week. And Cindy Lauper week was a big success. So we had 99 Loof Balloon week. I'm just trying to think outside the box here. Got it. Got it. Trying to listen, coming up with the main content that has no value is harder than people think. It, I think it's almost easier to create value oriented content. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I had told you guys that I was approached by a uh, a tilt rotator company. Oh yeah, to do, to do something right, and because uh, of your massive success with because of those, yeah, my what were those success. tools? What were those tools that we you were promoting that you never? What was heart? heart? Your heart, heart tools heart. success definitely drove you forward with this yeah, company. Yeah, drove me forward, propelled me into the stratosphere with my, um, with my Instagram sort of thing. But so this company approached me to uh, pump the tires on their tilt rotator while I was away, and I'm thinking, well, like I'm not that well known. Like, why me? And then I'm thinking more about it. I'm like, what about the videos that I posted this week? And I had posted a couple reels, or not reels, but stories about my wife going to the bathroom <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> and I'm like, what kind of a train wreck did they not know that they're getting involved with with me? Because I had heavily documented my wife's bowel movements on our vacation. I saw that. So. I did see that. So yeah, and she was a great sport about it, but yeah, no wonder why I'm not. They're not lined up to to sponsor Landscape Daddy, <laughs> or what's wrong with this tilt rotator company that they want to? <laughs> <laughs> they must have gone through all those big names before they got to me. <laughs> um, well, they didn't ask me. Maybe they could sponsor this podcast. We are looking for sponsors still. Still. Well, why don't you bring that up? I think I will. Here's Let here's it. my only problem with all that stuff. Well, I, I have a lot of problems with it, but one of my problems is that like, when the day comes that they tell you what you have to post and when you have to post it, are you willing to do it? Is that mm. your personality? Because it's not I'm everybody's. Like how much money is associated with it? I don't, I wouldn't do it for all the money. Uh, like for me, it's not, it's just, it's just my personality. I, I abhor people telling me what to do. I can't fucking stand it. And it doesn't matter the amount of money that some, like if someone said, I need you to post this and I'll give you a million dollars. And it wasn't something that I wanted to post on my Instagram. I wouldn't post it. I'd say, fuck your million dollars, shove it up your ass. And anyone can try that if they want. Um, what if you could choose the content, but they wanted you to run it by them first? No, fuck it. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't. I don't like anyone control. Like, I think to me that like my social media is to me, it's personal for me. I don't. I I just don't. I just I if someone's work so. Obviously, we do work with um, with Mammoth, right? Like, ob like obviously, yeah. I do work with Mo from Mammoth, right? Um, yeah. He's never once ever told me or asked me about anything. He asked me if I would come to the shop once and and look around the shop and do so. And I I was I was interested in that and i think he runs a great shop and i'd be happy to do it for him uh with him but uh like just the thought of someone we had a really good sponsorship opportunity that i in my mind paid really well for what they're asking me to do um but i just told them to show it up their ass because they just it was just i just as soon as we started like i was like i just i can't fuck like i just can't do this like i don't but that's just me I just, there's no amount of money that makes me sacrifice my personal. I'd rather live in the gutter. 
to make posts about shit that I didn't want to make posts about. Or if someone says to me, you need to make three posts. My problem with the other one was like, when I'm posting about stuff online, it's just a natural flow for me. And when you look at a lot of the sponsored accounts and they're making three posts about this every week and three posts about that every week, and this is posted every, you can track most of the sponsored hardscape accounts and you can say every Monday, there's going to be a post about this. And every Wednesday, there's going to be a post about that. And this person's going to talk about that four times a week. And there's going to be a random post that's not related to anything else they're doing about this two times a week. And I just, I can't do that for me. Technically, it's supposed to, it's supposed to say ad in it or it have the does. hashtag ad. It never does. There. Um, if I can if I can deal with ads in my fucking YouTube videos, I can deal with people spouting. I'm not I'm not saying I mind I like still that, watch people's you know. shit. I'm not saying I'm I don't have any problem with other people doing it. Like if you wanted to get a tilt rotator sponsorship and make a post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that's 30 seconds long that they send to you that you then have to do and post. I would still watch it. I have no issue with it. I think it's great for you that you're getting paid. I think that's amazing. I just, I won't do it. Yeah. That doesn't make it wrong for you. I I don't even think I'm in the right here. I think I probably should be hawking myself and making tons of sponsored posts and bringing in X. I've had a lot of people message me and be like, you've worked really hard to grow the loyal following that you have. But now you don't do anything to take advantage of it, and you should. But then on the flip side, I'm like, I just don't like people bossing me around. When I when I worked for Conperm, I don't know if I've ever talked about this. I was at the yard one time at like 5.30 in the morning getting samples. And one of the, you know, high up people came over to me and and walked up to the truck and I was in the back piling samples. And he said, uh, what are you doing? And it took every urge of my person to not jump out of the truck and absolutely beat that person <laughs> and punch the shit out of them for asking me what I was doing. Because I was like, obviously I'm, I'm trying to move this company forward, bro. Who the fuck are you to ask me what the fuck I'm doing? I am doing everything I can to move this mother. Fuck you. Are you trying to say that I'm not working? You motherfucker. And that's just my reaction to anyone telling me what to do. And then after I, obviously I didn't jump down and beat up the guy. Cause I was like, Ugh. and then I got on my truck and I was so fucking mad, fuming mad. And then I thought, you know what? That dude was just doing his fucking job. He's my manager. It's his job to ask me what I'm fucking doing. He's not aggressively pursuing some conspiracy against me. He's just coming to work like a normal guy doing his nine to five. He can put his check in his sales force. Asked Mike what he was doing today. Like it just, <laughs> like, but I've never really had that my whole life. I've never really had someone asking me what I was doing because when I started doing this, I worked independently and I, you know, I had to shovel 300 bags per day or whatever it was and no one asked me how i did it or what i did or how many like i just went and shoveled the bags they were there at the end of the shift and then when i worked i've been my own boss sort of like a foreman for as long as i can remember since like before i had a fucking driver's license i think so like i just i've never really had someone and back then no one could ask you what you were doing because there was no fucking cell phones so they just sent you into the world go work for the day hope for the best like it um so i just don't i understand why people do it and i think it's amazing when you watch a lot of the people um on instagram in our space if you watch how much they vastly improve their lives clearly through instagram sponsorships and how far their lives have pushed like you saw their businesses before they became Instagram hardscape famous and you see their businesses now and where they live and how their businesses are functioning. And I mean, you know that a lot of that is from like them pushing the sponsorships. And I think that that's great for, I think that's amazing. Like they're, these are people I just, 
I wish I could be that person, but I can't because some sponsor would tell me to do something and I'd say, go fuck yourself. Come get your stupid ass fucking tilt rotator off my machine, you stupid motherfucking piece of shit. And then sue me because they asked me to make a video on Tuesday of it spinning left, which is totally reasonable. Like, I'm not saying that yeah. it, I, I, I just, I could never do it. I couldn't. I, ha I have a feeling that you make your life hard for yourself a lot of the time. I do. I totally yeah. agree with you. And not in a bad way. It's just like that. Oh, it's in a bad way. That's PK's personality. That's It's part of what makes me who I am. Yeah. And it takes all sorts of us, right? But being that rigid, um, I think costs you some opportunities. But if you know that and you're okay with it, then that's I... that, that's important too. I think that's that's great that you, you know yourself to that extent right it's important to be self-aware yeah yeah I, i'm not it's how the world turns on advertising yeah i have a degree in advertising from college <laughs> i do yeah. like or whatever diploma i don't know whatever you get from fucking college or diploma degree whatever it is um i i think it's great that you like and i also think there's you know, these companies and all these sponsorships and all these things that people are, I think it brings a lot of value to the space. People are learning about shit that I never knew about when I started my business, knowing their numbers, fucking equipment. <laughs> like, I mean, you take a tilt rotator sponsorship, you might introduce tilt rotators to a whole new bunch of people that have never seen them before and improve their businesses vastly that they would have never known they even existed. I think there's a lot of good that comes from it. Like there's not a lot of negative. I just, I don't play well with others. Yeah, there's, and I understand what you mean. There's something to be said for having a handler versus being completely free and to say what you want anytime, right? Like having a handler who's feeding you a little bit of money isn't always necessarily worth it. Right, because they they're, yeah. they are manufacturing what you're saying and all that stuff, and to a lot of people, that's hard on their integrity. It would like, be I, hard hard on me for sure. Yeah, I, I, I can't necessarily that. say I've grappled with that because I've never been in a position to have a, a sponsor for anything before, right? So. Um, but you'd have to come so to some sort of agreement anyways when you're talking to a sponsor where see that's not true i have no fucking agreement well yeah i guess that's with any, a with very anybody particular ever. situation no but i've had other people send me stuff and i've used it and cut pizzas with it and made ham sandwiches and done all kinds of weird shit and they just they that's a company that tried to get me to sign a deal. And I said, yeah, you can go fuck yourself. And then they sent me all the shit anyways. <laughs> and then I just did whatever I fucking wanted with it. I think free stuff is different. Once money becomes a factor, they're now paying for your essentially services, right? No, no. Yeah. And yeah. So I agree with that, but um yeah, I agree with that. I, I guess it depends on what you... Yeah, if someone's paying you to do something, it's different than... But th those things are things after I turn down money. Yes. I don't... I don't. Yeah, I, I think it's a... There's, like, I... I think a tilt rotator would probably change our business, and I would like one. I'm not willing to pay for it. If someone wanted to give me one, I would make shit tons of videos about it and do all kinds of stuff with it, but they will never control the videos that I'd make. That's and maybe I, there's a sponsor out there that's like that, right? That's going to let you. I think we found free reign. Well, <laughs> like we've discovered. These guys also me. approached me after I made videos of my wife taking a shit. So that's true. They, they could be out there. <laughs> they could be out there. That's true. Yeah. Um, I I just I think too like I'm older than you guys, 
And I just come from a generation where it was like yeah. really, really, really bad to sell out. Hmm. Like when, like my generation, like when someone, when someone's music went on like an advertisement on TV, you were like a fucking sellout. Hmm. Like just, I, but you guys come from a younger generation than me, right? So you have a different view of that stuff. Uh, but, but have you seen the flip side of selling out? Yeah, I just don't care about that stuff. Eh. If it affords me an extra trip in the winter, you know, maybe it's worth it. If it takes a year's worth of mortgage payments off my house, maybe it's worth it, you know. And and I think that that's a big truth. And it would be worth it to you, but it wouldn't be worth it to me. It depends like that, what you can sleep like, with, right? Like that, and that's what you can stomach and what you can exactly. sleep with. That is absolutely the truth right there. Like I I couldn't sleep at night if I thought that I ever put out something I didn't want to put out. Um I wouldn't sleep at all. Would could you sleep at night if you started a university? No. That's stupid as shit too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, well, it's not stupid. I, for me, it's not the right fit. I don't like telling people what to do or how to act or where to, like, I don't mind telling them where to go to an event that I think is fun or something that's different, but I, like, telling people, I think that you going on YouTube, Mike, and telling people how to install pavers, you got a big set of balls doing that. I I would never do it. I just I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't I wouldn't I don't tell people how to install st- have you ever seen me make like instructional I made a video about teaching people how to plug in trucks. I I learned from the paper king account how to cut a pizza with a demo saw. That's true. That I takes that. a certain set of balls. It's just different. Like it's the, the content I make is hard to criticize. I mean, I still get some hate online, but it's hard to criticize it because it's not the content you make is easy to criticize. It's easy to disagree with. And I think that there's no shortage of people disagreeing (laughs) with anything. (laughs) People love to disagree. But I, I think anyone who's putting out content that, and I don't care if it's for your university too, I'm referring to like anyone who's putting out content where you're trying to teach someone something. That's a brave stance to take because you are going to get a million people who disagree with you. Making a, a a food review about a individually wrapped pickle, you don't get a lot of hate for that. Unless people love the fucking pickles, I guess. I don't know. Um, I... I don't know. I just, I think it takes a big set of, I, I think that people who are teaching people to do anything, it, it, it just takes a lot. Like I just, I always, for me as a person, I'm too scared about the impact of what I say to someone might have on them or their life. If someone's listening to me ramble on here and they decide to take some piece of that information and apply it to their life, that's their own fault. <laughs> that's not my fault. Because I, I, you know, if someone called me up and said I went broke because I bought Fiji water every time I went into the gas station instead of the fifty nine cent Nestle's water, I'd be like, well, you're a fucking idiot. Then I didn't tell you to do that. You did. You I, said buy the expensive water. You did. I did say buy the well, whatever. Then you shouldn't listen. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I I find the whole. The whole thing makes my skin crawl whenever I have a really struggle, big struggle with it. That's why you guys got to be in charge of sponsoring the podcast. And I'll just go along with it because I also don't like to upset people's apple cart. I'm not a disruptor. <laughs> not a disruptor of the industry. I don't know. But what are you going to do about it, Chad? I don't know. I haven't gotten the documentation for it. Maybe they are cold feet. Maybe they decided. Maybe, maybe this they guy, saw the diarrhea video. Maybe they saw the diarrhea video. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Or they saw the video of you. I think the diarrhea video is somewhat disturbing. 
But not as disturbing as the one where you're drinking five fingers of rye, talking about how you hate kids and lining up with kids. Well, I wasn't in the line. <laughs> I know. I've had it, enough of it at that point. There was like a bunch of rambling about, I don't remember the exact wording, to be fair to you, but <laughs> when I was watching it, I was like, oh, Chad, maybe I like, had enough of that line. I've had enough. I had had enough aligned at that point. It, we were three days deep in the cruise, and that was enough lineup. How many me. days was the cruise? Four days. Why did you decide to go on a cruise? Like, what brought you to that point? Uh, we'd never been to the Bahamas. We wanted to check that out, um, and we'd never been on a cruise. So, what better than a four night cruise? That's uh, a short drive away from Disney, where we'd spent a week. Nice. So figure two birds with one stone it ended up being the most expensive trip i've ever taken after all said and done it probably cost where would you rate it on where would you sorry go ahead it probably cost us over 10 grand to go and that's driving down there um where would i rate it on the list of she's taken um above cuba but below anything else because in Cuba, we were having half hot dogs for lunch. And there was also shitty customer service because it's communist. Shitty, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mike, oh, yeah. can attest to that. Yeah, He's care. got the statistics. <laughs> 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 it wasn't a bad trip. It was an experience. More than happy to spend a lot of time with my family. They're incredible. Um, it's just uh, not something that we need to do in the near future. I, my face, my feed or my Facebook feed or whatever is uh, very full of the icon of the seas, which I, I don't know if you've ever seen. I don't know if either of you guys have ever seen this cruise ship. Nope. You got to look it up. It's, it's the biggest cruise ship the world's ever built. Really? It's like. 30 stories tall and it's got on top of that it's got water slides and a go-kart track and mm, wow it's just if you look it up it's wild but whenever i see it it just looks like, like a big white prison in the middle of the ocean to me mm, yeah <laughs> I, and that's I, I don't... almost how you feel when you're on it with three thousand kids lining up for stuff chow time so you had to line up to See the Disney characters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's lines for Were that. there lots of them around? or No. Well, I mean, they yeah, they pop up every now and again, and they're doing dances and all this stuff. But they all have handlers with them, too, right? Like, anytime a Disney character is moving from one space to another, they have, like, a Disney employee with them, like, guiding the kids. What do you get, do you get paid to handle a Goofy? Not enough. I'd rather take a sponsorship than <laughs> fucking handle a goofy. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> we we were in Disney World and we were in line to see Donald Duck or something like that. And the kid in front of us had one of those rock candies, you know, rock candy on a stick or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it was green and he was fucking flailing it everywhere. And the handler's like, don't touch him, don't touch him. She's freaking out that he's going to get green rock candy on the white Donald and like she's swatting at the kid and all this stuff. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you should have made a video of that. You could have got a sponsorship so fast. Yeah. That, yeah. that would have been sponsorship so, further. Yeah, like to handle these characters and and the people are so passionate about these Disney characters, even adults, which I think is fucking weird, man. At like 40, 30, 40 years old, 50 years old. It's one thing to wear the Disney, the, the Mickey Mouse ears, but the full get up, like dressing up like a. Is princess, people wearing the full get up? I swear to God, it was it was something <laughs> else. Like, it was a, a lot at some some points. Like, and like full grown adults weeping over meeting a Disney princess and stuff like this. Like, and I mean, how much Disney merch did you bring home? Actually, they asked us at the border. We bought, I think, $180 worth of stuff, teddy bears, like Lilo and Stitch, 
shit like that stuff my daughter wanted um but there was people like in front of us at the stores and stuff and they're like eight shirts and everything right and like all stuffed animals and all collectibles and Christmas ornaments and shit. And they drop it down on the cash and it's like $400, $500. And it's like, this is why most people are broke buying shit like this all the time. <laughs> like you don't, what adult human being needs six Mickey mouse shirts or six Disney shirts. Like a grown adult doesn't need that. You They're can have not- one. They're not sacrificing now, so that yeah, uh, their yeah. future is sacrificed. Yeah. They don't have any money in the future. I would like to really know a broad range of people's finances just to see, like, the average American has $5,000 in savings or $100,000 in savings or this much credit card debt. Like, I maybe, and it's probably pretty accessible to find those statistics, right? But, um, because I always feel like maybe we're not doing enough. I'm not sacrificing enough. But these people don't seem like they're sacrificing anything. <laughs> laying, it, laying it out there with eight Disney t-shirts. And... They don't have any health care, so they got to live in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We try. We are in the process of getting benefits for the workers. Nice. And... Uh, some want them and some don't. And I'm just like looking at the price of the package. I'm like, am I better off to just give them like, say they need penicillin or whatever, give them the $80 for the fucking penicillin. than I am to spend two grand a year for a benefits package or pay for their fucking tooth cleaning. Whenever they, I think that's to, fine. It's still until, cheaper. I, so well, I think that, and I agree with you and I think that's fine until you get someone that has, um, I need to wash my hands. Jesus. <laughs> uh, what happens when you come home from work and podcast, man? Uh, I think that you. What were the fuck were we talking about? Benefits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, the benefits. I, th- I think that's all well and good until you have someone at your company that needs $500 a month medicine. That's heavy medicine, five hundred dollars. Wait, it isn't anymore. Like you, someone needs insulin. Someone needs fucking like. I'm just saying, like I, I agree with what you're saying. As long as everyone has a cough or a cold, but as soon as yeah. someone gets like leukemia, like what are you going to cut them off? Sorry, I'll pay for your penicillin, but not for your leukemia medication. Well, I could say NDL pays a thousand dollars for medication a year or something like that, and that's it. You could say that, yeah. You know, like. Nothing are personal. you bringing? Are you bringing it in, trying to grow the company and and hire new people and use it as something that you know, as a reason well, for people to work for you, or are you bringing it in to care for the people that you already have? The people that I have don't care about themselves, right? They they're not common trade and landscaping. Yeah, so I'm torn, right? Like I'm less enthusiastic than I was three weeks ago. Whenever we looked started looking into these benefits um after seeing the price of things and seeing that the guys are really wishy-washy about it they don't really care all that much so i i don't know what we want to do because we right now if everything stays the way it is we don't need many more people but i'm also until one of them dies until one of them dies (laughs) Hopefully not on the job, but <laughs> don't um, die on the WSIB motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I don't know what to do if we're if we're gonna get benefits or not. Have you asked them if they would yeah. prefer? Uh, you could call it like a med, uh, you know, an NDL medical account. Would you prefer a thousand dollar NDL medical account every year, where you can spend that thousand dollars on anything you want, which could be medical marijuana you know or they burn through that in a week (laughs) (laughs) and then that's their thousand dollars spent yeah yeah i don't i don't mind that i think that i that idea has some validity as long as you're not worried about getting all of that stuff like having the thousand dollar account and all that all of that 
is very, very good until someone actually gets sick and needs expensive medication. Yeah. And then it creates an awkward situation for that person and an awkward situation for you. Yeah. You know, and that and the situation if we never had a benefits package to begin with. Well, then I think you're better than if you had. Like, I think there's an. I don't. I don't think this for sure, but I think that there's an argument that you're better where you stand now than when you give a thousand dollars. I don't know because when I... you get when you give the thousand dollars, well, I don't. I don't know either. I'm just playing devil's advocate here, talking about both sides. I don't necessarily agree with this. I'm just putting it <laughs> out there as a topic of conversation because Mike's not saying anything for the last half an hour. <laughs> joking (laughs) i'm saying if you say you hit a thousand dollars and you say the thousand dollar limit but then someone gets they need insulin and insulin i have no idea how much that costs but it's not cheap i from what i know mike how much does insulin cost i have no idea so find it (laughs) they they weren't a diabetic before, but they became diabetic while at the company. Well, I'm just saying all of a sudden they need insulin. Just as an example, I don't know. And say that insulin costs $600 a month. And when you get through the first month and a half, are you going to... Let's look it up. How much does it cost? 35 bucks A month? Uh, it's just by the vial. Okay, Ten how many milliliters. Vi- how, vi- how many vials do you use in a month? What is Average- the monthly cost of insulin? $35 per fill includes what, $70, $70 per fill. $58 is typically a 30-day supply. Okay. So, so you're within that's a terrible dollars a year. That's a terrible example. You're not sick enough to work at natural design, is what you're telling you're me. That's sick enough. If, if, you, <laughs> if you need insulin. <laughs> when I, like, we... When we looked at benefits, that's how the benefit person, this is a long time ago, not in this company, at another time I looked at them. That's how they explained it to me. All of this stuff is well and good until someone gets actually really sick. You need to hire 65 and older because then it's covered by uh, OHIP. I have one. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Or under 18 because that's also covered. Oh, that's true. Right? So. Yeah. Um. Or vote NDP for their PharmaCare plan. Fucking idiots. Um, <laughs> Without knowing where the money's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that I guarantee is going to cost you more than $1,000 per fucking worker. Oh, yeah. Um, Do you think that yeah. the workers would use the massage and the, all the other stuff? That's not because even like, included in the package. Nothing's included for it? No, not even like five hundred bucks. I'll pull up what I got. There's, I know we're running out of time, but uh, Gla- glasses are usually expensive if you want to include them in the package. Uh, Charlene, what do you have to say? Charlene, Charlene, Charlene. Is that a movie or a song? Jolene is the song. Jolene, see, I knew there was a lean. Uh, I knew there was some um, kind of lean involved. There's the basic bake it, basic basic package for fourteen that fourteen hundred dollars. The basic enhanced, basic enhanced for twenty three hundred dollars. The enhanced basic for eighteen hundred. Is there seriously one called it? Because I was about to say, is there an enhanced basic? And the enhanced enhanced. <laughs> There's not one called enhanced. enhanced. I swear to God, I'm going to send you this right now. (laughs) Uh Give me the enhanced enhanced, baby. Uh, You can look it up for yourself. We can go through this together if you like. I just sent it to your email. Uh, Opening it on my email. Inbox. Do you want it too, Mike? Do you feel left out? Send it to me. Uh, where you go? Maybe I should have done this before. Uh, spent. In typical, not our finest hour fashion. Uh, 
so the basic basic it, a lot of shit that i three hundred dollars for hearing aids what the hell did you send this to paver king paver king what uh it's just, yeah, we're, get, we're, get, we're officially getting new emails. Paverking1 so, at gmail.com. We're getting uh, emails that are like Mike at Paverking. Oh, yeah, I got those. Did chat you? at chat at ndlinc.ca. It's pretty exciting. Actually. Yeah. I've never had that kind of email. Probably go bankrupt next week now. Are you guys both updating your websites? Hmm. I said I was, but I haven't yet. Yeah. Um, so this still hasn't come through. So obviously there was some. Well, went to John. Yeah, same here. All right. What's so going on here? Well, I guess it's not that important. So um, every three years on the basic plan, you can get. A complete oral exam every three years, every 36 months. And then the basic enhance is every 24 months. But for $2,400 a month per worker, I feel like that's fucking excessive. Uh, Ours is, for people that are single, I think is... Like 150 a month, and for families is like 300. So I think that is high. That's 300 a month would be over 3,600 dollars a year. Right? Yeah, for a family though, that's the family yeah. package. Yeah. So, like I'm no, saying, 2,400 is oh, it seems like a lot for an individual. Yeah. Um. You get fillings. And then it's not even 100%, right? Like, it's 60% of the cost of your fillings. Hmm. So they're still out of pocket, probably 100 bucks or whatever. Yes. I just don't see... I guess it's like with any insurance, right? You don't see the value until you need it, like you said. But to go from nothing to all this extra money... I don't know if we're there yet. Is this something that I need to swallow and just fucking do it? And we have benefits now or I don't know. Orthopedic device is two thousand dollars a year. Hmm. Ambulance, two thousand dollars a year. Perfect. Prescription drugs, everything. Thirty-six Do, months. Eight. Is there is there even one person at your company that's bugging you hard to get this? Nobody. Nobody. I just thought this is how businesses evolve: is to do this type of thing. But with this type of money, I think it's not a, an evolution because this is we're talking. Twenty thousand dollars a year, easily. Well, if you're going to lose all your staff over it, then I would tell you it's a wise investment at twenty thousand yeah. dollars a year. Yeah. Like if you had six staff that were saying, "Listen, if you don't get benefits, I'm fucking out of here," I'd say to you, "Then yeah." I would say to you, a hundred percent. You need to get it. It's it's a vital thing for your company. You have to get it. But if you don't have anyone that's even asking you about it, I would say to you that how many employees do you have? Eight. I would say to you to start the thousand dollar a year NDL account and say you bring me the receipts, I'll reimburse you the money. Yeah. Because then yeah. you're you're you know I I if someone is driving you nuts because then what happens if someone does get a cavity or they do need some penicillin or whatever. You, at least they're covered. Yeah. You know, or they got something to put towards it. It just, I, if no one's bugging you for it, then. But the guy wash. I would, idea. I wouldn't. Okay. Um, Done. All Case right. Closed. End of the episode. Chad's not getting benefits. Bye. <laughs>